did a lot of art in, in high school, and um, I got started just uh, inspired by art by going to um, the uh, Cleveland Art Museum. And I remember I, part of my presentation I did at the, at the workshop, I talked about my inspiration. And uh, I specifically remember it was an Edwin Church painting that just completely captivated me and put me in this environment. And um, it's essentially the first matte painting I'd ever really seen. It's just, you know, it's really analogous to the matte paintings I would later see at ILM. And that really uh, inspired me to get into opening up my mind, my imagination, and then, you know, films like Blade Runner and Star Wars projected me onto the path of, all right, who are these people that did this? How can I do that? Yeah, from that point, I thought, all right, the people who did this are people like, you know, the big guys like Joe Johnston and Sid Mead, and, oh, they studied industrial design. I really didn't even think film design was in my future, but I thought I'd love to get paid to draw for a living, you know, starting there at, at a young age. So um, I couldn't go to, afford to go to the expensive art schools, and you know, my mother wanted me to have a well-rounded education, so I, I went to a, a state school my, where I grew up in Ohio, at the University of Cincinnati, and um, I never thought I'd be able to get into film design. I went into industrial design and really aimed to be to do the most imaginative thing I could do within that you know, um, vocation, and that was transportation. And what happened with, to me actually was that uh, during a, a couple internships at Chrysler and Ford, I, I found out what my life would be like. I asked myself, where would I be five years from now? You know, would I be able to, maybe I'd be designing the next concept car, but I'd be drawing the same thing every day. You know, I'd be drawing cars every day. You know, I, that's, I thought back to what inspired me at a young age, you know, these landscape paintings and these films. I thought, no matter, even if I, you know, make that, I'll never, I want to be, I want to be drawing cars and characters and creatures and architecture. So I, in my lecture, I talked about how I spent an, an hour in a, in a bathroom one time at the an intern, apprenticeship at Chrysler, and I, I said, all right, I had my sort of follow your bliss moment. And I said, I'm going to, from this point on, I'm going to make my own curriculum. And, uh, you know, my, my professor said, you're crazy, you're, you know how few jobs there are out there. You know, do you know anyone who's, uh, you have an opportunity to break into transportation design. No one from this school has, has done that, maybe one. And, um, but I, I knew what was right for me and I just, uh, I, I did my design. I just, I made my own curriculum, made my own portfolio and it was a catalyst to getting me into, into ILM. Oh, the first picture was, um, Disclosure, something, uh, just, you know, the visual effects films of the day, and I was happy as, you know, I was, I was, you know, elated to be at ILM and talking to the people who inspired me, like Dennis Murin and the model makers that made the Void Comp machine from from Blade Runner, and uh, you know, even the model makers that made the um, the, the Millennium Falcon and the kit bash kits, and you know, I was just, you know, drooling every day. So I didn't care if I was working on, you know. B movies or C movies or whatever, but um, from there I, 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 I eventually became, um, after a few years, a visual effects art director. And I worked on like Mission Impossible and you know the Jurassic Park sequels and um, some of the Star Wars special editions. And um, um, but I found out that as a visual effects art director, I wasn't getting. I was happy to be in the film industry, but I wanted to be closer to the creative process, not post production where everything's been designed. Um, I learned a lot about visual effects and the techniques and model making, but I wanted to get closer to design. So I left ILM to become an independent freelancer. And, um, next, within a year, I sent my portfolio to the Wachowski brothers, and they hired me to uh, do pre-production for their films, and that was a dream come true for me. Get from you know immediately, I'm there working really closely with the directors with just a few people, starting before there was even a script right to the you know the nuggets of the creative process with work, you know, with, with the directors so um, I, you know I talk about that and how you're constantly learning and I'm constantly you know putting up my myself up against um, comparing myself up against new people to keep myself feeling like um, challenged you know whatever I think I'm hey I can yeah, that, that drawing turned out pretty well then I hold up like David Roberts drawing, or if I can feel like I'm painting pretty well, I'll hold up, you know, Thomas Moran painting, and just, you know, do a little reality check, and keep, you know, keep inspired, and uh, keep looking at uh, the things that 
I say kind of makes your spine tingle because you love you know you love that film so much or you love that painting or artist's work so much and you know keep the juices flowing. No, you know I thought I thought about going to production design and I thought about um, yeah running an art department to do larger design projects and because I've, I started off in the industry as pretty quickly actually right into visual effects art direction I got a taste of you know the leadership role and working with other you know the that sort of process um, and I found it you know it was great for the ego it's great for the, um, you know the title um, but at the end of the day after you know I was doing artificial effects art direction for five years that the thing I the thing that um, I enjoy the most out of the creative process is the isn't the leadership isn't isn't delegation and coordination it's actually the artwork it's that feeling of talking about an idea with a director and at the end of the day having a tangible piece of art. And I would rather do that for one director, make, you know, for one movie, and, when, and then you know, close the book on that and then work on it again for another. So it's like I keep getting the, the highest high and not have to go <laughs> through the hard work of making the movie and all the visual effects and all the hard work. And I do that from time to time, but I, I really try to focus, stay focused on what... Um, you know, gives me the most artistic pleasure. So for me, next, I've um, I've just built an art studio in my backyard. Um, extremely excited about it. I finally have the space to take my easel out of the kitchen, and um, and I you know I balance my, between the, my freelance work and my own work. And um, I thought, you know, where do I want to be in five years? You constantly look at that. Where do I want to be ten years? I decided, you know, pretty pretty early on, I don't want to be a production designer. Um, I don't remember the production designers of all the films I love. I remember the people who did the designs and the visual um, uh, creative work of the films I love. So that's what I want to do and then I also want to have my own my own voice out of my own artwork, mixed media paintings, oil paintings.